This is a nuclear reactor, and it's made out of glass. All of the components you see here you'd find in any number of power plants across the planet. What makes this one special is that it's not producing power. Instead, it's a simulator. It's the only such model in the world. A one-tenth working scale model that engineers can train on and see through. And soon, because of politics in Germany, it will be gone too. Last year, a specialist in Germany sent me an email. A few months later, I was on a plane to Essen in Germany with an urgent assignment to see the world's last working glass nuclear reactor simulator. It's housed just a few miles from the city center in the KSG GFS Simulator Center, a lovely campus where scientists and engineers gather to teach, learn, and train on state-of-the-art power plant simulators, both nuclear and fossil fuel. It used to be the national training center for the nuclear industry in Germany, but as we will get to, times have changed. When it comes to nuclear power, dear viewer, I'm sorry to say that most media, like The Simpsons, has lied to you. It's not like nuclear engineers and operators are just waiting at their desks with donuts to fumble and bumble their way through the next potentially catastrophic situation. No, those engineers rely on their training, and that training comes from simulations. You see, decades ago, it became common policy for all nuclear reactors around the world to have a suitable simulation to operate with, to train their engineers on, a one-to-one -one replica. And we're not talking about just instantiating valves and readouts in silico, no, we're talking about real scale nuclear reactors with all, all that pesky, you know, nuclear material. I'm here in Essen, Germany today to show you the world's only scale functional nuclear reactor simulator that's made out of glass. You can see through it. We're gonna admire it and explain it today because by the end of the year, this multi-million dollar device is going to the scrap heap. But we'll get to that in a bit. Once inside, you can tell that the facility is serious about power production. Exposed beams show you the engineering of the building. Miniatures show the true size of power plants, what the engineers here will be simulating. I wish my engineering school looked anything like this. Before getting to the glass model, our first stop was a one-to-one -one working replica of a nuclear power plant's control room, complete with all the color-coded controls and diagrams you'd find in a place that was actually producing power. You can see how good this simulator really is when you compare it to the insides of an actual nuclear power plant, even down to a completely accurate scram button. And like we found in Dresden, Illinois, our hosts in Germany were big old nerds, and they knew I'd probably want to simulate a uh, nuclear emergency if I could. You want me to press it, right? Okay. Seeing just how quickly safety systems switch on, how fast control rods and outputs drop, really shows you how even during an emergency, it can seem pretty easy to handle in a modern nuclear plant. And yes, it, yes, it was kind of fun, okay? From the control room, we made our way through more architecturally interesting hallways to the home of the one-tenth scale glass nuclear reactor simulator. The multi-million dollar model has everything that a nuclear reactor does, minus the fuel, of course. All the pumps, all the valves, all the heat exchanging tubes so that an engineer in training or lawmaker wanting to know more can see literally everything that happens when spicy rocks make steam. The glass has pros and cons. The benefit, of course, is that you can see into the model as it's operating and watch what changes as switches are flipped and buttons are pressed in the control room. The big disadvantage is that glass is much more fragile than the metal and concrete behemoths that are literally 900% larger than this, the real things. Nevertheless, glass is worth it when you want to demystify the most powerful energy generating process that we have. 
I've brought you all the way to Essen, Germany, because I feel like if people have a problem with nuclear power, aside from nuclear waste or a potential misinformed disaster, it has something to do with a perceived complexity of everything going on. If you can't understand it, how can you control it? But with the help of this simulator behind me, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to learn how simple everything actually is. You might even be a bit underwhelmed, and that's a good thing. So, how does a pressurized water reactor like the one simulated behind me actually work? A pressurized water reactor, or PWR, begins with the reactor itself. Carefully placed fuel rods heat up water in the vessel to superheated temperatures. Superheated because the vessel is pressurized, the P in PWR, which keeps the water from turning into steam at its regular boiling temperature. More heat means more heat transfer. From the reactor, the hot water, kept at pressure by the pressurizer, moves into these so-called U-tubes. They're called that because this video's on YouTube. No, they're called that because they're shaped like U's. Engineers don't really have cool names. The hot water from the reactor moves through the U-tubes. As it does, heat moves along its gradient into the cooler water around those tubes, water that is in a completely separate loop to prevent any cross-contamination. The heat transfer brings the separate water in the U-tubes to its boiling point, and the steam generated exits this whole system and will be the primary mover for the plant's turbines, which generate the electricity. That's it. That's nuclear power. It's just boiling water with extra steps. Yes, there are many valves and pumps and uncreative names for things, but as you can see, thanks to the glass in the simulator, what I think many people imagine as a dangerous black box is pretty uneventful, which is good when you're powering over a million homes. Not only is a glass model like this super critically important when it comes to showing potential engineers what happens when a nuclear reactor goes right, it can also show all of them what happens when a nuclear reactor goes wrong. For example, this glass model behind me can show you exactly what happened during Three Mile Island. Our expert hosts tuned all the settings to simulate the disaster. First, a malfunctioning valve caused the shutdown of pumps in the secondary feed water system, the separate water around the U-tubes that cools the water circulating through the core. The reactor immediately scrams, as intended, dropping control rods into the core. However, a relief valve on the reactor coolant pressurizer fails to close. False instrument readings, incorrectly closed valves, steam bubbles, and human error would eventually lead to boiling in the reactor, and therefore a falling water level in the reactor despite a high level shown in the pressurizer. Without water cooling the uranium fuel rods, decay heat damaged the rods, leading to the release of radioactive material. This, very simply, was Three Mile Island, and you can see it all before your very eyes. While the glass tubes and vessels do show the most important phenomena inside a PWR, it's not all there is to it. The simulator, like a real nuclear reactor, needs a lot of plumbing that can't be made from the see-through material. Here, in the basement of the facility, is where all the water and steam moving topside gets condensed and recirculated, and it can be done all remotely via computer. The temperature of uh, something in the 80s of Celsius, and the mixture after the 12 will have a temperature of about 80-85 degrees of Celsius. If the steam tube, 85 degrees, yeah, after having throttled down, and then this 80 degrees steam will meet 22 degrees of water. The threshold, the threshold indicators on the other side. Of course, the one thing that we're not simulating today with this nuclear reactor simulator is the nuclear part. You don't actually need fissile material in the simulated reactor behind me to get all the same physics and thermodynamics that you would see in an actual pressurized water reactor. Instead, behind me, you have metal rods that are heated electrically, and it does all the same things with all of the same systems. If that blue glow was actually Cherenkov radiation, like you'd have in a normal nuclear reactor, um, I would be dead. Not immediately, though. 
slowly, very painfully. You realize just how critical a glass model like this can be when you look at a typical readout that you would see in a nuclear power plant's control room. Nothing behind me looks very dramatic, does it? But then you look inside of the glass model and it is anything but calm. It is in what Adam Savage calls physicalizing the concept where education really happens. By linking this to what's inside the glass model, you truly start to understand. Using spicy rocks to, in the end point, make steam it can be kind of complicated and in some very rare cases dangerous, but all of this is just in the service of almighty and knowable thermodynamics and heat exchange. You take some rocks that can heat each other up, you heat up water, that heats up water that goes to steam, that steam turns turbines, and then that somehow makes electricity and goes through some wires. That's not my department. And then eventually it charges your phone or allows you to watch this video, whatever you do in your free time. Physicalizing the concept, training until decisions are automatic, is something that you can only really do with a simulator. And that can be critically important at a nuclear power plant, as our host Jens, test engineer here in Essen, explained. Well, here in Essen, we run and operate simulators for all the nuclear power plants in Germany. Um, or we used to, because they're shut down for a few months now. I'm working as a, um, as a test engineer, so that means I'm um, building uh, and testing simulators for different customers. Uh, I make sure that the physics we program matches the physical behavior of the real plant. Complex technical stuff can happen to you in a very short time frame and you need to take decisions. That, that is the same for every power plant. You have a huge risk of ruining lots of your equipment and investment very quickly when you don't have a simulator. There might be stuff coming up that requires you to take decisions within minutes and you can't really, you don't have the time to think it all through to the end. Either you're trained or you're probably not going to find a good solution in the time frame that you have. It's a bit like a big computer game. The first time you enter on, on nightmare difficulty level, you enter something and you find yourself losing but learning the mechanics. Mm -hmm. And then you watch a StarCraft tournament and see that <laughs> People are doing stuff that, yeah, that you could maybe think of, but that you couldn't pull it off that quickly. Yeah, the gut feeling. Yeah, the, the gut feeling, the, the strategies that they have. Maybe you have an idea of how to employ that, but you wouldn't be able to click that fast. You wouldn't be able to see what your opponent is doing that fast. I'm a gamer, so I can, I can safely go to record to say I'm a gamer. <laughs> and um, that's one of the things that, that drew me here. And that is what the simulator does for the trainees. It can bring them in all sorts of difficult situations to handle in, in the in the real time or to like say, I have no idea what's going on, please hit the freeze button and explain. If the glass model seems relatively simple, nuclear power in Germany is not, Jens explained, nor is the future of simulators like these. Fukushima was 2011. We had, by the way, just finished building this simulator control room at that point. And then uh, there was a bunch of power plants that we shut down almost immediately because they were the oldest ones and deemed unsafe. And then there was a schedule made for phase out of the other plants that extended over a 12 year period. There's no nuclear power plants remaining in Germany. So what will happen to all of the simulators here? They're gonna be decommissioned. Parts that still fit to other power plants in, in other countries um, will probably be sold off and the rest will just be trashed. Is that the same fate for the glass model? What's going to happen to that? Well, we have hopes that some interested buyer would be found and selling price would be probably a symbolic euro. And, uh, but someone would need to come in and deconstruct it carefully and reconstruct it on site. But unless someone willing to do that is found, the glass model will be trashed too. Is there anything that you could or would want to say about having the reactors be basically not used anymore here in Germany? Oh, that is a difficult topic in Germany. The, the nuclear phase out and the reactors not being used anymore is, well, it has, been, has always been controversial having nuclear power in Germany. I think that is safe to say. My perception, at least in the news, is that 
there has been some question marks about whether this was a wise decision, but that is after the thought has been popping up a lot in 2024, after the last reactors were shut down. Um, yeah, well, apart from that, I would like to withhold any personal opinion on that. Unfortunately, it now seems inevitable that by the end of the year, the world's only working glass model of a nuclear reactor will find its way to a scrap heap. For our part, I'm at least glad that we were able today to immortalize this amazing piece of science communication and engineering. The glass model will be trashed too. At the time I'm recording this video, Jens and his colleagues have been trying their best to move the model. Right now, it's possible that an interested university or museum might want this awesome piece of engineering for display or demonstration. The scrapyard, unfortunately, is still looking like the most likely outcome, but the effort has been made. There's also a real chance interested parties will see this video. So if you're as impressed as I was, if you learned as much as I did, show them in the comments. I don't know, consider it a possible contribution to nuclear history. Hopefully, by being able to see inside of this amazing piece of technology, it is impressed upon you that nuclear reactors and the technology that surrounds them is far less menacing than many think. Until next time.